think I lost it. Right? Oh, here it is. I got a panel mount end connector that I'm going to mount on this case also for future purposes. That way we can hook into Wi-Fi. That's not getting done today. So uh, what tools are we going to need for the project? Well, basically we need a, need a drill. Uh, I'd recommend getting a Dremel for cutting out the base. Oh, I know I forgot something. I got this 20 and one drive bay, uh, yeah, front, pa front panel, fan control, temperature sensor, memory card reader, all that bullshit. We're going to try and hook that up. Not everything in it will be hooked up, but at least we'll be able to control the speed of our fans, be able to see the temperature of the hard drives, have alarms, and have uh, front panel USB on this if you need to plug in anything extra USB, and a memory card reader. Because it's always nice to have as much as you can in such a small case for a portable device. Uh, as far as tools to put this project together, like I said, you need the drill, you need the Dremel. Uh, I picked up this hole saw kit at Harbor Depot, uh, at Harbor Freight, for I think six bucks. You need about a three inch hole saw blade to cut the holes for the fan. And I think I covered everything, if not. Anyway, we're going to cut to uh, me trying to put this thing together. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on video or not, so I might just take some still pictures of the process. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Okay, the first step you want to do is, as you can see, I'm grinding off the edge on the one side. Uh, so I'll have room to mount a fan down there because that's going to get in the way. So just take your Dremel, grind it off, and eventually either you can cut all the way through it or just weaken it enough so that you can bend it off. Uh, the main thing you got to worry about is be careful about the metal splinters that come off. Uh, all the metal dust with grinding in that case, if that gets into a hard drive or your power supply, it will short something out and it won't be fun. Uh, we'll skip ahead to the next step. Now you can see, uh, basically I took the front panel, uh, temperature sensor, LCD, whatever the fuck you want to call it thing, and I traced it on the box. And now we're going through with the Dremel and actually cutting a hole to put the face panel through. Uh, my fine motor skills kind of suck, so as you can see there, my wife's cutting it for me. She's actually surprisingly pretty good with the Dremel. Uh, I guess the shape of it and that it vibrates. She actually enjoys one of my power tools. But we're going to skip ahead or I'm going to speed up this video however the editing works. And uh, we'll finish cutting out this front panel faceplate thingy. Okay, now you see we have the hole cut out for the front panel faceplate. Uh, we're just smoothing out the edges a little bit. One of the problems, though, is we accidentally cut it a little bit too big. So when you trace with a magic marker or whatever, it's, you might want to cut towards the inside of the line rather than dead center of the line. Uh, you can always go back and widen your hole later. Now, if you can see on camera what I'm doing is I got some vacuum line from the automotive store or actually I had some sitting in the back of my car and I'm just gonna cut it and hit cut put a slit down the center of it and put that over the edges not only does that smooth out the edges so they're not sharp and you won't cut yourself on it but it also fills in the gap so that the face plate will fit a little bit tighter Next step I need to do is mount the power supply in it. Now, 
I'm using a baby ATX power supply. It fits in the case real nice. Uh, it's it's pretty small. Uh, I believe it's 150 watts. I think that's as small as you can get. It'll do the job. No problem. There's a little hole on the side that you can put a screw through to mount it. So I'm going to drill a hole in the side of the toolbox and use that just to mount the power supply so it doesn't move around much inside. So the last thing you want is it moving around and hitting the hard drives or something coming unplugged. Remember, this is a portable unit, so it's going to take a little bit of abuse. Okay, the next step is installing a fan. As you see, I'm putting a, just going to put the fan down. Or In this step, what I did is I put the fan down and traced the fan. Now, I kind of fucked up with that. Uh, as you see later on, I have them my uh, fan grills, them skull fan grills. It actually worked out better when I traced the fan grill and just cut out from that instead of using the whole entire fan. If you make the hole a little bit smaller than the fan, it looks a whole lot nicer. But as you see, pretty much trace the fan or the fan grill, however you feel like doing it. And draw an X along the center of it so you can see where the center point is. Drill a hole in the center, and now you're going to use that hole saw bit that I was talking about. Now, I thought that would actually cut a nice, perfect hole in the case. But apparently them bits are meant for wood and not metal, so they really didn't cut through good. But they did score it pretty good so that it gave me a good path so that we could trace it out with the Dremel and cut a nice round circular hole with the Dremel. Okay, I don't have video of this next step. Uh, somebody fucked up my camera. But uh, I took some still pictures. As you can see, I made rails to put the hard drives on. Uh, I mounted them from uh, front to back of the hard drive. I found they fit be best that way. The problem I ran into is you can only fit serial ATA drives in there. If you're using a parallel ATA drive, the connector sticks out a little bit too far. So I only had one parallel ATA drive, so I made a mount out of L brackets and mounted that on the lid of the case, as you can see in this picture here. Next thing left to do is just run the wires. Um, I'm sure you can figure out drill a hole in the case so that you can put your power wire through and your USB cable. And I personally just tied down all my wires to the to the existing rails that I put in for the hard drive. Uh, just run all your USB wires and your your power wires and hook up the wires on the back of the of the front panel LCD, and you're pretty much done. Uh, sorry this video didn't turn out as good as I planned it to but like I said my camera got knocked over and I lost quite a bit of the footage uh, uh, I really hope you get some use out of this this case originally was supposed to be a six bay hard drive and because of that parallel ATA hard drive not fitting down the bottom that's when I got the idea to mount it to the lid to the case so it became a seven bay hard drive so that means this thing's capable of holding seven terabytes or more of data. That's a lot of data. A lot of people ask me, well, why would you build something that holds that much information? I mean, what would you ever use it for? My answer is, whatever the fuck I want, really. Uh, a lot of people call me a pirate or, you know, other names, stuff like that. Uh, I'm preparing for the apocalypse, and I prefer the term that I'm a digital historian. So, I hope you get some use out of this. Check the show notes. I'll try and I should be able to pack a lot more information on the show notes. Uh, like I said, because the camera's not functioning properly right now. For the past year, we've been doing a lot of 2.4 gigahertz.